Hello, there we go, perfect, and hello everybody and welcome to Tech Bytes. My name is Andrew and I'm so excited that you have decided to join us here on Twitch or you are catching this live on, or not live, on YouTube. Um, if this is your first time tuning in to a Tech Bytes episode, um, Tech Bytes are bite-sized tech topics and tutorials and talks for teens. I don't know what that T stands for, uh, but really this is an opportunity um, for you to get exposed to some really cool stuff that's going on in the world of tech. And what's great now is because of all of this uh, this global expansion, thanks to everybody being in lockdown, we're able to um, connect with some really great folks that are doing huge work, even though they're kind of close to home. So uh, if it is your first time tuning in, um, you'll notice that there is a chat just over to your right or left hand side. I'm not sure where you're looking at this. If you're on your phone, it's down below. Um, if you have any questions um, today, just feel free to type them in the chat and I'm there to moderate. Um, and if you have any um, you uh, anything you're looking to find out afterwards, um, we'll share all of the links for all of the important stuff in there as well. Um, but with all that being said, you're not here to listen to me talk. You are here to listen to this amazing person um, talk. So Elgin, um, I'm so thrilled. I got the chance to meet Elgin back in pre-COVID times um, uh, and to learn a little bit about this amazing, amazing um, VR collaboration tool um, hubs. Um, and I immediately said, and I think we immediately had this conversation, I was like, how can we connect and try and pull um, high tech you and connect it with hubs? And especially now that everybody's kind of um, becoming, I coined this phrase, which is probably not my phrase of uh, Zoombies. Um, so like, and I feel like people are in that space that now they're looking for something different. And if there's something amazing and different to have, this is definitely it. Um, so uh, yeah, so up on the screen right now, you can't see me anymore. You can just see some really awesome, um, like just continuous views of like Elgin looking at Elgin. Um, but uh, I'm gonna get rid of my view on here and uh, you won't need to worry about me anymore because really the person that you came here to see is Elgin and I'm just gonna unmute you Elgin and uh, yeah, you can take it away. You're good. Hello, okay, great. So you can hear me fine, okay, right? Okay, perfect. Hi, nice to meet you folks. I'm super excited to be here talking with you today. Uh, I'm not a Zoom expert. I do all of my meetings and stuff online using our platform hubs, which I'm going to tell you all about in a second. Uh, so I'm going to need you to bear with me for a moment while I switch over to my like presentation mode. Um, but yeah, I'm just so excited to be here. It feels like days ago that we met in person, but I guess that was quite some time ago. <laughs> Okay, so let's see, this is going to share my computer desktop. Okay, so are you able to see my screen that I'm sharing? Yeah, give us one second. I okay. just need to get this screen sorted. It just ends up being a weird issue. Um, properties, and I'll change that to that, and it will work, and then I'll change it to that, and <laughs> it will work, and I'll change it to that, and I'll change it to that. There we go. Okay. And yes, there we okay. go. Now we're working. Perfect. So um, I'm here to talk to you about hubs uh, by Mozilla, Mozilla Hubs. Um, so thank you for having me here today. So a little bit about me. Uh, my name is Elgin Sky McLaren. I am the community manager for Mozilla Hubs. So my job is one that I could not have imagined uh, even just a few years ago. I basically spend a lot of time in social VR communities and inside of our online platform, meeting with people, telling people about how it works, uh, finding out about, about, about events, attending events um, in our platform, and also getting feedback from the community so that the dev team knows kind of what features people want to have and um, you know what sort of bugs people are encountering as well because this is super experimental technology I'm gonna to talk to you about. Um, but it's really awesome. It's it just got a lot of potential. So I hope that you folks are as excited about it as I am. Uh, so before uh, starting, or actually I guess kind of during my time at Mozilla, I've been here since uh, about a year ago. Uh, I studied interactive arts and technology at Simon Fraser University in Vancouver um, where I did a master's on exactly that, interactive arts and technology, which is sort of like computer science mixed with design um, 
and just looking at how humans use technology. Uh, and I am now a remote worker for Mozilla um, based on Vancouver Island. So one thing that's pretty cool is, is that, at least I think so, I was, I believe to my knowledge, the very first person who was working on my team who was fully remote. Uh, so my team is mostly based in Mountain View and I have a picture on the screen right now for, or from a uh, going like a, a, a party that we had a little while ago for one of my colleagues. So you can see that we've stacked a bunch of ducks in the middle of this picture. There's a cake on top. Uh, <laughs> so one thing that's really neat is um, Mozilla Hubs is a social virtual space that is inside of the browser. And you don't need to have a VR headset to be able to enter into it. You can enter in VR, but any device with a mobile browser should be able to get in. And so you're able to meet pe with people in these kind of like three-dimensional spaces where you're represented by avatars. Uh, and <laughs> I was actually on my team for like several months by the time I actually had a Zoom chat with people and saw what they looked like, which was a super funny experience because I just associated all of my colleagues as being like robots and stuff. <laughs> so in this picture, um, you can also see that there is a plant at the front of the screen, maybe it's a little bit small, but there's this kind of um, plant. That's one of my colleagues. He is dressed in a plant avatar. Everything is super customizable inside of Hub. So we find for us, like our team uses it all the time for doing meetings, you know, at least three times a week, usually more. Uh, and our meetings always end up being super playful and fun in a way that they just don't end up being when you're using a tool like Zoom. So there's a few advantages. One, you don't have to be <laughs> like looking super nice and done up if you're doing a hubs meeting because you know you're just going to be an avatar. I can roll out of bed and be there no problem, no time at all, uh, and I don't have to worry about doing my hair and makeup. I can just like be there and be represented as an, a robot or a person or however I'm feeling that day. Another thing that's really nice is that. Uh, you uh, you have this access to um, spatialized sound. And so basically the way that it works inside of a hub space is that you can hear things that are closer to you louder than the things that are farther away. So you can navigate around sort of like in a video game. So if you play video games, you're familiar with navigating 3D spaces. But the farther you are away from something or someone, the quieter they sound. And so you can end up having a conversation with, you know, if you've got a bunch of people inside of the space. Some of you can break off and have one conversation. The other part of the group can go to another, um, another part of the room and have a separate conversation, but you're still physically in the same space, which is really nice because then if you hear someone else talking about something that you want to chat about, you know, they're talking about their pets. This is something I'm always guilty of. Anyone starts talking about their pet, I'm like, oh, let me see photos. <laughs> Um, but, you know, you can then really easily move from the conversation that you're in over to visit the other people and vice versa. So it's much more like socializing in the real world. Whereas when you're doing a video chat, um, you know, it's often one person who's speaking and everyone else has to listen, kind of like what we're doing right now. <laughs> Um, so that's sort of like a bit of an intro to it. And I'm, I'm going to go into more detail, of course, but that's kind of how we use it on our team. Um, now, as I mentioned, it runs in a web browser. So the way that it works is that um, you go to a URL, um, hub.mozilla.com, and I'll show you how to do this in a little bit. And because it runs in a web browser, it means that you can bring in all sorts of additional media really easily. So basically anything that runs on the web can be brought into a hub's room and shared really easily. So one thing that's kind of fun is that you can bring in a picture you know, of your pet, like I'm talking about, I'm always telling people to bring pictures of their pets into my hub spaces, um, but they can bring it in. And then like, you know, we can kind of play with it, change the size, move it around, bring in other pet pictures, you know, put them in uh, ranked order of which one is the cutest and which one is the least cute. Um, it's super easy to do that. And again, I'll be going through a bit of a walkthrough in a moment. Um, you can share all sorts of content. So that includes images. So you can have flat images, so like a normal picture, but you can also do 360 screen captures or, as well. You can do videos, you can do 360 videos. So you can watch an immersive video with other people, which I find is super fun. You can do um, screen captures of your desktop. You can send in webcam information. Uh, you can send in like live streams from platforms like Twitch, uh, audio files, PDFs, um, 3D models, et cetera, et cetera. So lots of things. Um, in this picture, you'll see someone is giving um, a presentation at a conference to a group of individuals. 
So <clears throat> it is uh, Hubs is an open source project, uh, which means that our code base is all um, viewable on GitHub. If you ever want to go and take a look at sort of how this is built, uh, and it runs on almost any device. So it can run on a mobile phone, it can run on a desktop computer, uh, and it can also run in VR headsets. So that's one thing that's really, really nice about the platform is that um, you don't need to have any sort of special gear to get into it. So that means that people won't necessarily, or they won't end up being left out if you're having like an event in VR and someone that you know doesn't have access to a VR headset, they can still come and join in in the activities in in two dimensions. Um, one thing that I will note uh, sort of early because it's like a question that people are always asking about hubs is how many people can you have inside of a hubs room at once? So it's a little bit flexible and I've got kind of a not, you know, some people might not be super happy with this answer, but it's sort of a, it depends. Uh, so these devices that we're looking at on screen right now, there's mobile phones, there's VR headsets, there's a desktop computer. Uh, some of these have more computing power than others. So we typically recommend having a maximum of 25 people in a space, uh, and ideally maybe a little bit less than that if you have people that are um, using sort of low powered devices. So a mobile phone or a wireless VR headset might not have the same processing power as a desktop computer. So we recommend keeping it between like, you know, 15 to 25 people. Typically 25 is fine, even on lower powered devices. But there might be some audio artifacts, like it gets a little poppy as you go. But if you know that you've got people who are coming in with like a good Wi-Fi connection, you know, they're not, they're not using um, their cell phone data. They've got like a wired in, um, or they've got a good connection at home and they've got a powerful computer or a desktop VR rig. You, you can have up to 50 people without issue. So it's sort of a little bit flexible depending on the kinds of devices that people are coming in on, but 25 is a pretty good rule of thumb and that's what we default the spaces to be. So everything in Hubs is customizable. Um, you can bring in your own customizable avatars. We have one template tool for doing that right now called TriQuilt, but there's also a few others that exist out there and I, I might touch on that a little bit later uh, again. But I just want to let you know that you aren't stuck with the robot avatars that we have. There's lots of them available online um, as well as in our database. Uh, and you can also customize all the scenes. So the environment that you have your in, event in, it is, uh, it can change the mood so much to have a different type of environment. So um, we sometimes will have like themed rooms or we'll go on these like tours of different cool spaces that people have made. And people often end up doing activities that are kind of like that. So around Halloween, we had a spooky house and, you know, people came in avatars that were like ghosts and like all sorts of costumes. And it really does change the vibe of your event. So even if you're having like a classroom presentation or if you're having, um, you're having like a pretty serious work meeting, you know, having <laughs> these kind of fun environments can really change the way that it feels. So um, what can people do in hubs? <laughs> so as the community manager, I try to keep my finger on the pulse of what's going on in hubs, but there's obviously way more than I can keep track of. Uh, and so I can probably talk for ages and ages and ages about all the cool things that people are doing in hubs, but I will spare you that. And I'm just going to touch on some of the particularly um, cool stuff that I've seen recently. So this is a picture of a presentation, much like the one that I showed you before. Um, this is my colleague Robin giving up a conference talk uh, for a conference that was shifted from being an in-person conference to being an online one. And so they had these like networking sessions and conference presentations inside of hubs. And she's able to screen share her Google slides in there and give it just like she would her normal conference talk. You can do art. Um, <laughs> so this is just one of like oodles and oodles of art pieces that have come through hubs and that I absolutely love. Uh, <laughs> I mentioned I studied interactive arts and technology. Arts are something that are super, super fun, I think, and a really cool way to explore new technology. So this is um, a, a professor named Martina. Um, I can't remember her last name off the top of my head, but she's done a lot of really cool work with her um, students as well as on her own, um, kind of creating these immersive virtual spaces you can go through and there's all sorts of like really interesting media up on the walls. Um, a cool thing someone did recently was you can add audio um, files into your room 
And the closer you stand to that audio file, the louder it'll be. So they had this like 3D model that you could walk through. And as you walked from space to space, uh, the different parts of the song would get louder and quieter and it would end up being kind of like, you know, you were remixing it yourself just by moving through the space. This is a Twitch streamed dance party that was pretty fun. Uh, so there was a group that I, I believe they're still doing this, but they were having these weekly live streams of DJs and live coding music inside of hubs. And then we also had, uh, speaking of arts, uh, there was a poster gallery that was created in hubs that was super cool. And you can see that this one, uh, just based on the screenshot, it, you know, it looks actually kind of similar to what a real art gallery would look like. There was kind of an installation in the middle that you'd walk by with a bunch of videos. Uh, and it was super cool to see. And, and you know, they, they put a lot of work into creating a, a custom environment into this um, into this world and making it really polished because this was an agency doing it for a fundraiser for COVID. But I've, I've seen really cool instances of people creating their own personalized museums using the tools in, in Spoke and pre-built models. Um, there was recently uh, one that came through that I, I wanted to share, but I wasn't sure um, if it was actually supposed to be made public, but someone had made a, an art gallery basically of their experience as a child discovering that they were an individual who identifies as LGBTQ and sort of walking through kind of audio clips of them speaking, some text, some photos, and it was a really beautiful way to, to sort of see their experience in this like virtual world. Um, this is just another um, cool presentation of, um, there's a lot of heritage artifacts that are available using, um, from, from museums and platforms like Sketchfab have a lot of cultural artifacts. And it's cool because you can bring them into hubs rooms, make them bigger, and they can be like larger than anything that you'd ever see in a museum or you can, you can really zoom in, you can actually like pick them up and handle them. And you know, there's not any weight to them because they're virtual, but it's really neat because you can actually be more hands-on with these objects, which otherwise would be always hidden behind a glass case. Uh, so I just have a few more examples here, but I feel like I've probably talked about this a lot. This is a, a student project where they talked about, um, they, they, they created the story and you wandered through their project. Uh, and then this is a, just a screen capture from a 360 video, which is a really fun way to watch immersive videos with other people. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have played Jackbox games uh, inside of it. So it's not always like serious art gallery kind of stuff or presentation stuff. You can just do fun social things inside of the space. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you a little bit about how you can host your own event in Hubs. Um, so I'm gonna have to stop screen sharing this one and I'm going to screen share like how to get started. Okay, so I have stopped that screen sharing, but I'm gonna do a new screen share with my whole page desktop. Okay. Okay, and it might take just a minute. I'll just need to do what I did. Do do the random clicky um, <laughs> things that I did last time that seemed to get this to work. There you go. There you go, awesome. Okay, perfect. Oh, and actually, um, I didn't share it. If I reshared it, will you have to do those clicky things again? That's okay. I might have to. I'm not sure. Okay, great. I'm going to stop the share. I'm going to share it again, but I'm going to optimize for video because I'm going to be doing some stuff that maybe um, might look better if I do the optimized screen share for a video clip. One second. Okay. Can you see it? Okay. Yeah, all good. Perfect. So I'm hoping that that'll be a little bit smoother. Um, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, I did it. <laughs> I broke it. <laughs> okay, I'm going to reshare again. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> I was like, I see a red button. I want to get rid of it. Okay. Um, so I, I've got some basic controls up on the screen. I actually forgot to mention this. So once you're into a hub space, the most important controls uh, on your desktop is the clicking with the left mouse button and wiggling around to look. And then the W, A, S, and D keys and the space key. Um, this one also features the G key, but you can kind of ignore that for now. So I'm gonna walk through how to create your own space inside of Hubs. So 
I'm going to start off by just going to I'll open up a new tab at hubs.mozilla.com. So this is the hubs landing page here and creating your own space to hang out with your friends is super easy. I don't think it could be any easier. You just have to click this big pink button uh, and you should have your own um, room. So I've clicked the button. You don't even need an account to start your own. You don't need an account to join in. Uh, the only time you start to need accounts is if you want to um, change the scene. Um, and I'll show you how to do that in a moment. So I have created a room in Hubs. This is my personal space and no one else can come here until I invite them using the URL. So this is my new home on the web. Um, you are prompted at first to go through this like enter room process. So I'm clicking enter now. It's asking me to test my audio and then I should be in the space in no time. So as I mentioned, you can use the W, A, S, and D keys to move around. If you want to look around, you can click and hold your mouse down. And as you move your mouse around, it'll like look from one place to another. And that's all that's required. And so right away, if I wanted to invite people to come and hang out on my personal river island, all I would need to do is click this share button. Uh, and if people went to this URL or went to this hub.link code, um, so they go to the URL hub.link and then type this in, then they would, uh, they would be in my room and they wouldn't have to sign up for an account or anything. So the barrier to entry is really, really low. Now, I also want to add a, sort of a, a caveat that, um, <laughs> yeah, so it looks like some folks might be joining. <laughs> so there is a bit of a caveat in that um, people who do see that URL, they are able to join your space, right? So you want to be a little bit cautious about who comes in. So it looks like someone has joined us. <laughs> Hello. Uh, there are um, emojis if you press the space bar and press um, and, and then press them, then you can like wave at people and interact with them. <laughs> Hello, nice to meet you. <laughs> Um, so if anyone else does want to join in, um, we do have this code here if anyone wants to pop in. Um, but I'm not going to keep that up for too long. So yeah, so it looks like someone has just joined from their phone. Um, so that's really cool. So as you can see, like it's like very, very easy to get people into this space. Um, it works across different browsers and different platforms. One thing I'll add is that iPhone, you need to use the Safari browser. So in case you're testing it out, there should be a warning message um, just because there's some limitations on iPhones, what the other browsers can access on your phone. And yeah, so then once you're inside of the space, uh, you can add different models into the space by clicking on the create button. And that allows you to really easily kind of bring in all sorts of existing 3D models that people have made. Um, so I can go through all of these. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just bring in a fish tank. It's like kind of the most, <laughs> the most basic one. Um, we can resize it by using some of the controls. So if you point at an object and press the space bar um, or the tab key, um, or if you're on your mobile phone, it's a two finger tap. Um, but if you press that, then you'll get the secondary menu. And the secondary menu lets you change the size of an object. There's a rotation controls. Um, it lets you also open the link. So if you wanted to like download that model directly, or you can put it in the trash if you entered something in that you'd actually don't really like. There's one other thing I'll note. At the top here, there is an option to pin an object. So by default, any objects that you bring into a hub's room uh, are automatically, um, they're removed when you leave. Um, and that's for performance reasons. So you don't want to be leaving behind a digital trail of all sorts of stuff in the world. Um, but if you do want something to stay after, uh, like after you leave so that it's more permanent, you can point at it and press the pin button. That's one way. <laughs> if you do have something that you definitely want to always be permanent, then you can use the scene, um, like uh, our scene editing tool spoke, which I will show you how to use in just a moment, or at least how to access it. So we won't have time to really go into much detail. 
So um, I don't know your name, but uh, it says your username here is Greater Scalp. <laughs> so Greater Scalp, I'm going to tr take us to a new location um, to show some of the different scenes. So the scene might go black for a moment and then it'll fade back in and we'll be in a new environment. So one second. So if you go to the drop down menu in the upper left hand corner, um, there are options to choose a new scene. So I'm going to click on that now. And from this list, we have all sorts of different uh, default templates that you can choose. These ones that are in the featured list have all been tested so that we know that they perform with Quest headsets and you know, mobile phones, et cetera. We also have a scene database that you can search. But the things in the database, sometimes they're going to be really detailed models, and they might be a little bit less performance um, optimized. So I definitely, if you're having a larger event, I would pick something out of this list. But if you just want to explore, you can type in keywords. Uh, and I know who, one scene that I want to go to. Uh, it's called C-U-N-Y, um, SUNY. I don't actually know how to pronounce that university name. <laughs> but if I click on this, um, I knew that this existed. So <laughs> I've seen this before. Uh, so I wanted to transfer to this SUNY campus um, scene. So <laughs> uh, as I, I imagine that most of us who are watching have probably felt pretty cooped up recently because of everything related to COVID. We have a regular meetup on Fridays as part of the Hubs team and everyone's welcome to come. You can just join our Discord community, which uh, I will share a link with at the end of this presentation um, with you. But we have these meetups on Friday and the whole dev team comes. Uh, and so it's a good opportunity to sort of kick the tires on hubs, ask questions, etc. And for a while, I was always using this particular scene because it was so bright and open and it kind of made us feel like we were actually outdoors. <laughs> Um, but this one's actually a really cool environment. It, the way it's created is it's just a 360 photo, which you can find lots of those online. Um, or if you've got, um, you know, some cameras will also, they've got apps that allow you to take 360 photos. And then they just added sort of a flat square on the bottom. And that flat square kind of acts as a ground to hide the, if, if I go through the floor, you'll see that there's like the bottom of the photo, which looks pretty bad and would be weird for our perspective. But because they added this like green grassy bit, it actually makes for a really nice sort of environment to play in. Uh, so I recommend this one for any sort of meetups that you might have. <laughs> Um, but if you did want to change one, we do have this tool called Spoke. So you can create your own environments from scratch, um, or you can add things in a little bit more permanently. And I, I love that you're playing with the emojis at the moment. Um, if you shake them, more particles should come out. <laughs> you go really fast, and then you can throw them. <laughs> I have too much fun with them. Um, so if you go to... If you wanted to change the scene that you're playing with, so if you find one in the database that you really like, a lot of them have been marked as remixable. So this one is remixable. So if I go to the drop down menu and I click on room and scene info, it'll bring up, uh, this is not uh, it's super easy to find, but it brings up this uh, kind of modal pop up that mentions the CUNY. And you'll notice that it's got an underline, which means it's a link, which will take us to, this is uh, a scene landing page. So this is a URL that has the word scene in there. And it has it gives you the option to create your own new room using that scene, or you can remix it in Spoke. So again, Spoke is our online um, scene editor that you can use for actually totally customizing your environment. So if I go to remix in Spoke, if you've ever worked with a tool like Blender or anything like that, then this might look kind of familiar. It's sort of pared down, but uh, it has some of the same features. So the, here we are in that same scene, but now we're in the editing mode. So I can make updates to it, and then I can make my room take those updates in. So I can bring in those same sorts of models that I had before. So there's like the, the fish tank, if I wanted to put a fish tank in the middle of the room. <laughs> you know, as one does, I could add, let's say if I wanted a, a chair, there was a really good beach chair earlier. I wonder if I can find it again. It's probably under sketch, uh, sketch pad. Okay, is my chair here? <laughs> yes, here we go. So <laughs> there's this really nice sun chair that I could maybe add that seems like it would belong. <laughs> 
I can add uh, a few more spawn points if I wanted to. So um, the place that the user loads into in the first place is called a spawn point. And it's this little kind of human shaped thing. I don't know if you'll be able to really see this, but there's a little human shaped person there. And that's where the new users into your space will load. So we can um, like copy and paste this, or we can find new ones inside of our elements panel. So here we've got things like uh, the ability to add images. If we wanted to add a spawn point, we could let's try adding another few in there. So there's one, two. Now you can have just one or two spawn points. That's not a problem. Um, just everyone will load like on top of each other. So I definitely recommend <laughs> making sure that there's at least a handful in there. Uh, and another thing that maybe I might want to do is bring in, say, an image from my computer. So one thing that's kind of handy is to have my list of controls. And if I just drag and drop that from my desktop, um, it'll just show up here. Maybe not in the best place to begin with, but there we go. And I can maybe put it a little bit closer to these people. Anyways, um, I won't <laughs> keep <laughs> customizing this any longer, but I just wanted to sort of show you that this is totally flexible, totally customizable. Um, if I wanted to rotate this image around, because right now it looks like it's going to be backwards, I can use the Q and the E keys to rotate it around by 90 degrees. And there's also like a lot of um, sort of in the properties panel down here, you can change the scale of it. So if I wanted to make it much bigger, I could double it in size, triple it. I can be really specific about the position and the rotation, et cetera. Um, so it gives you that fine-tuned control. Also gives you the ability to change um, things like the lighting in your space, et cetera. Um, I don't have time to go into that stuff right now, but I just want you to know that it's super flexible. And there is also, um, so for environments, people often ask about this, like how do, if I want to make an art gallery, what do I do? You've got kind of two choices. You can either find an art gallery scene inside of our, um, our list of Sketchfab models and Google Poly models, or you can go purchase your own off of Sketchfab and then upload it or any other 3D modeling store. Or if you do Blender modeling, if you want to learn how to model things, you can use an open source tool called Blender to create these sorts of things and then import them really easily. Or uh, you can also use, we have an architecture kit that lets you build um, pretty complex scenes using sort of bit by bit Lego pieces that you can sort of slot together. Anyways, I, I don't think I've made a huge improvement to my scene at the moment, but I'm going to go ahead and publish it anyway. So if I click publish to hubs, there should be a little bit of a delay. I'm going to rename it Elgin's version of the SUNY room. And these uh, options are off by default, the um, allow remixing and allow Mozilla to promote my scene. But those basically just mean that other people can use the scene as a base. And we can, um, if we say that we can promote the scene, then that adds it to our database. So I've agreed to both of those. Although I don't think anyone would want to use this one. It's kind of, <laughs> it's pretty basic. <laughs> so let's go publish. And in a few moments, this should appear as an option to be able to change our scene to. So if I click view my scene, it'll bring up um, the scene landing page again and I can create a new room. Or if I want to change the scene from the room that I already created, I can just go back to that tab, Ooh, wherever that is. Ah, here we go. So I can go back to that tab. And then if I go to my list of scenes, choose a scene, if I go to my scenes, my scene will now appear there. And if I click it, I will be transported into the, the revamped version of this beautiful outdoor scene. <laughs> so you see that we landed in our spawn points. There's this beautiful list of instructions on how to move around that's nice and big. Where's my beach chair? Oh, and there's my beach chair. <laughs> <laughs> so everything is still there. So that's sort of like a very quick and dirty kind of intro to how to change your scenes. Um, there's other things you can play with inside of hubs as well. There's a selfie camera. So if you click the camera button, you'll see what you look like. So I'm currently in this little like, kind of robot avatar. <laughs> there's a pen tool that you can use to make drawings. Um, 
Up here is also the screen sharing and webcam sharing tools. Um, my, my, my friend here has also discovered the laser pointer feature, which is attached to the pen tool. So if you turn on the pen, it creates a kind of a laser so you can direct people to look at certain things, which can be really nice <laughs> if you're trying to show something somewhere where to look. Um, if you want to change your username or avatar, you can go to the set name and avatar options. Um, so if you go to browse avatars, if you have any of them in your list of avatars, you can add them from the featured list by clicking this like two squares on top of each other. And once they're in your avatar list, you can actually edit them as well. Um, so if you want to take like one of the Minecraft skins, for example, if you click the edit button, then you can add a new skin to it to make it customized and personalized. We have a lot more information on our GitHub page as well on how to actually make new avatars and to edit them. I don't have time to cover that today. But in the meantime, oh, wow, <laughs> that's great. You found the, the rainbow ones. <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, so this rainbow one, the feature that allows this was only launched like a week ago, and we just were looking at it at the meetup recently. So that looks really, really cool. So um, that kind of covers like all of my basic intro to Hub stuff. So I'm just going to pop over to my presentation again, um, finish up here. So, oh, I'll, I'll mention this since there actually is someone inside of the room. Oh, wait, no, no, they left. <laughs> if you did want to moderate your space, you do have some controls over um, people's volumes, etc. Or if you wanted to kick someone out or mute them or, um, yeah, just basically to maintain, moderate your space a little bit better. If you point at someone and open the menu controls on them using the space bar, it'll bring up these options. You also have a list of people who are in the room in the upper right hand corner. And from that list, you can see who is speaking, who's muted. And that really helps a lot with troubleshooting if someone's mic isn't working for some reason. Um, so if you want to try it yourself, uh, feel free to go to hubs.mozilla.com to give it a shot. Um, we also have a Discord server, um, which there's a link to that on the hubs.mozilla.com website as well. If you just click community, if you if you don't feel like copying this whole thing out for yourself right now. Um, but this is where our development team does all of our work. And we also have a show and tell channel. And we would love it if you decided to play with hubs or if you're using it for something to pop over there and like let us know how it goes. <laughs> you can feel free to ask questions, but you can also just share anything cool that you might have um, created, or if you want to see some of the really neat stuff that people are working on actively. If you want to reach out to us on Twitter, I don't know if people really use Twitter anymore, but I do. <laughs> we have a Twitter handle, Mozilla Hubs, as well as my personal one is Elgin Scott. So feel free to reach out. And that is it from me. Thank you for your time, and I'm happy to answer any questions that you folks might have. Awesome. Thank you so much, Elgin. That was awesome. So how, uh, uh, it's funny, so before we'd met, I'd never heard of hubs before. So I'm wondering like how long has this been around and like why have more people not um, seen it, I guess? And why don't, why, why isn't everybody using this over Zoom? I, 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 you know, I wish that everyone used it because I personally find it so much more fun. You can like have emojis and like, you know, share content so easily. But, uh, you know, we started off, it's been around since about 2018 that Mozilla Hubs has um, existed, but it was really like, it was part of the emerging technologies department. So Mozilla has a, a, a a department, a section, like there's a teams that are working on new innovative technologies. So when my teammates were first joined on, there was a, a number of them that were hired and they wanted to see like, is it possible even to do this in the browser? Because this is all really new, like web VR, web XR stuff is something that's really just taking off, um, you know, in the last little while. So we wanted to see if you could have this social experience. And so it started off with just these little blobs that we're talking in the browser. And then it's been growing and growing ever since, kind of just still in the incubation stage, like, you know, what, what features can we add and grow? And really, it you know, we launched um, a product called Hubs Cloud uh, at kind of around the time that COVID like st first started really, um, you know, hitting, um, impacting people um in a big way in north america at least and 
Hubs Cloud lets you take all of the Hubs code and then self-host it as well. And so it's really been since like March that like more and more people have been taking our code and then like totally playing with it, making it totally customized, playing with all the code and like creating these really unique bespoke kind of experiences. Um, so it's, you know, we were really part of the like, we're emerging, we were being quite experimental, we were trying out new stuff. Then in like the fall of last year, like late fall, early winter, I was hired or like, I guess I was hired on like, yeah, about the fall last year to start building up the community. And it's been growing and growing and growing ever since. And now that we've got Hubs Cloud and more things are happening online, like our usership is just going through the roof. And we're, you know, we would love to see more things happening inside of this space. Um, so please, <laughs> if you have meetings and stuff, you know, people encourage people to use it. it it's free to use the hubs.mozilla.com offering. Um, the paid service that we have is really to take all of our code and then self-host it on your own servers, which, you know, for most people, that's not what they're going to do. But it's pretty neat to see a project go from being emerging to being like a, a full-blown, like, tool that people are using for like super cool stuff. And every week we get invited to new events that are happening in hubs. And it's like, I, I like want to cry sometimes because I'm like, it's so beautiful. The things that people are making using like our standard code and just doing their totally own unique stuff of it. Totally. And I guess uh, the other question that that's come through now. Um, so if somebody wants to be you, like their goal is to be somebody like a community manager with a really cool project like this, how can they, get from where they are in high school now to where you are in the really cool job that yeah. you're working in. <laughs> I'm, I'm jealous of me for my job. I love it. It's so much fun. And I, I, I must admit that I had no idea that this job really existed because it, it's, it's, you know, relatively new, like working in this sort of space. So I certainly did not plan on doing this when I was in high school. <laughs> um, I actually, I started off, I, I switched careers. I started off doing, um, working in the arts as an, an arts administrator. So working for music festivals and stuff. And then I, I loved tech the whole way through since I was in high school, but I never really thought it was the career for me at the time. Like I didn't know how to do coding. It didn't seem very accessible to me at the time. This was a while ago. <laughs> uh, but then I just kept loving the idea of building out interfaces and like building stuff for the web. So I started taking night classes and sort of learning more about code. And then I ended up making the leap and kind of throwing myself into it. So, you know, if you are someone who's in high school, who's interested in doing like community management or working in tech, like learn a bit about coding. Um, you know, there's a lot of resources online on how to do that. And that gives you, you know, even if you're not going to be coding full time as a job, it gives you that understanding of sort of what the technical limitations are, et cetera. And it, it helps to be able to kind of speak the language of the development team. So I'm definitely someone who like, I like getting my hands dirty on the code. Uh, but then also, <laughs> if you want to work with communities, uh, I have community has always just been a really big part of my life. So I was always involved with like music festival organizing and like concert organizing when I was younger. And then when I got into tech, I started getting involved with meetups. So if you are familiar, obviously this might not happen until COVID restrictions lift a little bit more, but you know, I would attend meetups and I would help to, you know, make sure that people feel comfortable in them. I would organize events to help people learn. Um, so definitely see about different community organizations that might be doing this already and you'll make such a cool network and that's how you you find a job like this one awesome that's so fantastic um so last question that's out there um if you had to on the spot as you are now name your favorite feature of hubs what would be the favorite sort of or maybe it's something that's not there it's something that's coming but what's kind of the coolest favorite thing that's on the platform that you can do? Oh my goodness. I have to say that my favorite thing <laughs> is, um, my absolute favorite thing is that you can customize your avatar and you, you, this takes a little bit of tweaking. It's not super easy to do at the moment if you've never worked with um, Blender, but I, before I started working with Hubs, I had no experience with 3D modeling at all. And then I took some little online courses and stuff to get familiar with how to actually work with these tools. But you can take any like 3D model that you have and use it as an avatar. <laughs> and it is so silly. <laughs> so um, you can upload a model that you have. My favorite is uh, for a little while, I had to like 
sometimes go around and like change the rooms around a little bit. So I made myself a Roomba avatar. I also have a Kool-Aid man avatar that, you know, I just, I found and I modified it a little bit and then I can come into a room and make everyone laugh by going like, oh yeah. <laughs> I don't, I don't know if that Kool-Aid Sorry, I, got, I, got, around, I, I totally got the reference. If nobody else did, I'm sure that there's somebody on the stream. Just go look up, oh yeah, Kool-Aid Man, and you will understand what we're talking about. But yeah, when we first launched that, we were like every week bringing in like different avatars and stuff, and they always made us really, really laugh. So um, I think that would be my favorite one. But I mean, from a more practical perspective, being able to bring in objects, um, like just bring in, being able to bring in an image or like a 3D model or a PDF is so helpful when you're working with a team. That's kind of boring, but like it is really nice to be able to just bring that in and then like emoji react and have everyone be able to be in this shared space together when we're working. Totally. And I mean, having been on like must have been at least 100 Zoom calls over the past few months now, I definitely am feeling the uh, staring at a PDF um, is already a little bit boring. So if we can like amp it up a little bit by having that PDF shared in like a really cool background venue, it definitely just adds something totally different to it. So. Yeah, for sure. Also, another thing that people do with PDFs sometimes, which I haven't seen a lot of, but I loved it when I did, is that, you know, when you're looking at a PDF, it's like, a picture and then you just like go through it and like that's what I did in this presentation <laughs> but when you're doing them in hubs you can have like a house and the house is your presentation and like you go into one room and it's like I'm going to tell you about you know the intro and then you move to another room and that'll be like another topic and so you can like walk through the presentation which is like a much more engaging way to interact with information so totally. anyways <laughs> that's fantastic. So I know um, those who are on the stream right now, you can't actually see me, but that's okay because I'm not the important one. So um, this, uh, if you're wanting to get more information, um, check out the Discord server. Um, if you're on Twitch and have never heard of Discord before, you're about to get your mind blown. Um, <laughs> and if you've never been on Twitter, now there's never been a better time to uh, to jump onto Twitter. Um, check out Mozilla Hubs there um, or Elden Sky. Elden Sky. Um, also, please check out um, hubs.mozilla.com. Um, it's a really, really cool tool that we are going to be using for our next monthly meetup with our members. So if you're a High Tech U member on here, um, we've had some fun in the past with some other games, but we're going to do our next meetup in a couple of weeks on, um, on Hubs, which is really exciting. Um, yeah, and Elgin, thank you so, so much for this. This is like the kind of stuff that really excites people. This is like, we haven't done a, a Tech Byte in a little while and we've had like a ton of viewers that have been on the stream too. And I have no doubt that when we upload this to YouTube um, that it's gonna be a huge um, folks that are that are viewing it just because anytime there's some cool disruptive technology that, that kind of we're able to share it with the world then, um, and I think Hubs kind of meets that right where it's at. It like, it makes me really like, you know, it's still really like emerging technology stuff, but like, it's really cool to see what people are doing with it. So thank you folks for being part of like, I, I you know, I hate to say like a revolution, but like really like, you know, the people that are making stuff, like they're doing things for the very first time. And it's, it's super cool to see that happen. And it, it, I'm hoping that the web will incorporate more of this 3D stuff going forward. I can, I see so much potential for it. So I can't wait to see what you folks make. Awesome. Thanks so much, guys. So I'm gonna I'm gonna switch over to or sorry, Elgin. So, oh, it's one of those days. Thanks so much, Elgin. I'm gonna switch over just to my video, but I'll keep you on the line. Um, so uh, if you've just um, if you've just tuned in um, to the stream, it really sucks because you missed a really awesome stream um, with uh, with Elgin Sky from. Uh, from Mozilla Hubs, um, the community manager. Um, but don't worry, you can check this out on YouTube. Um, so uh, if you are interested in learning more about Tech Bytes or to check out any of the extra Tech Bytes, just Google High Tech U Tech Bytes um, on YouTube. Um, obviously, some of our things are here on Twitch as well. Um, so you can check them out here. Um, if you want to learn more about High Tech U, um, down in the bottom corner down there, <laughs> That way, one of these ways, one of these bottom corners has uh, has the website hightechu.ca where you can check out all of our content. Um, please follow us, subscribe to us, do whatever you need to do, click the buttons. Um, and before we go, thanks to our supporters, um, Coast Capital Savings, uh, Faculty of Engineering at the University of Victoria, um, Prelude Suite, um, 
mural. Um, of course, Elgin and, and Mozilla Hubs for being able to make this, this Tech Bytes happen. And of course, to all of you, the interested youth who have been staring at your screens for the last um, four months and continue to stare at it for really, really cool content that we're producing with Tech Bytes. Um, be sure to stay tuned. We got some more, um, we got some more Tech Bytes coming up. Um, we're going to be having a Tech Byte on, um, on the uh, DevOps role in a couple of weeks. Um, we've got a, um, some really cool programs that are coming out very soon. Um, we're going to get to do some hands-on data science um, and some other mini academy stuff. We've got our showcase coming up at the end of August. Um, we're going to be doing a tech crawl at the end of August as well, where we're going to be doing tours of a whole bunch of different tech companies across the globe. Um, so please, please, please um, stay tuned, um, subscribe, check things out. And of course, Elgin, thank you so, so much for this, um, for this stream today. It's been fantastic to have you and to be able to show this amazing tool to uh, the rest of the, the, the Twitch and YouTube world. Awesome. Um, so uh, with that, uh, we're gonna end off the stream. Thank you so much everybody for tuning in and we will see you next time.